Today I'm making a miniature. Well, really he's not that miniature, he's pretty darn big. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. As often happens on the internet, especially in the Fellowship Facebook group, that's the little private group for my Patreon supporters, I got inspired. I got really inspired by a cool build that one of my supporters made. Tom created this awesome foam earth elemental or stone golem out of scraps of XPS. And I thought that was really nifty and I wanted to build one for myself. I decided to treat it as a speed build and I wanted to make one really, really fast. And I did, and it turned out pretty cool. I like it, I like it quite a lot. This thing was probably one of the easiest foam builds I've ever done. It couldn't get any simpler. I literally just used some leftover scrap XPS foam, a utility knife, hot glue, and that was the basis of this build. I used some you know, sand and some rocks and some PVA glue, and then later some moss and static grass and stuff to decorate it, but the actual build, foam, knife, hot glue, like an hour of building, and it was done. So this is a perfect project for anybody who has limited resources but does have access to some foam. It's also something that looks really cool and will be very intimidating when you drop it on the table. This thing could be used as a stone golem or an earth elemental or some other crazy homebrew rock monster that you may want to do. Before we jump into the build, I want to thank Miniature Market for sponsoring this build. Miniature Market is an excellent one-stop shop for all of your tabletop needs. If you need to pick up minis, whether it's unpainted stuff or pre-painted stuff or blind box stuff, whatever, if you need to pick up miniatures of any kind, Miniature Market has you covered. They have an extensive catalog of minis. They also sell a whole bunch of other stuff for the hobby. They sell paints and painting accessories. They sell dice and gaming accessories. They sell books and manuals for all the different systems. They also have an incredible collection of board games and Magic the Gathering and all sorts of cool stuff. So if you need some minis for your game, some adventurers to face this nasty rock monster, head on over to miniaturemarket.com slash blackmagiccraft for all your tabletop needs. Let's build. You really don't need very much to build this project. You just need a little bit of XPS foam and a utility knife. Now, if you happen to save your cutoffs from previous projects, this is an excellent way to use them up. So grab that bag of scraps and start hacking it away into a torso, some arms and legs. I didn't have any real small scrap pieces on hand, so I just grabbed a random piece of inch and a half thick foam, cut out a torso sort of shape and started hacking it up. Now there's real no right or wrong way to do this. The only really important thing is that you don't want to leave any of the factory surfaces in place. You don't want that just smooth, flat edge. So cut your basic shapes out, use different techniques to hack it up and get different textures and whatnot. But obviously uh, you should be really careful doing this. You can very easily cut yourself with a really sharp Ofa blade and you don't want to do that. I did that. It happens. It's not that big of a deal, but don't don't cut yourself. Once you have your torso or sort of midsection shape complete, you can start adding some legs and arms. And again, you're gonna wanna just make these look like chunks of rock, but you do have to be mindful of how they will connect to each other. It's a good idea to find two spots or create two flat surfaces where they can sit nicely and be mindful of the position of the actual stance that this thing will take. You want it to have an interesting or kind of cool looking pose and you also want something that won't fall over super easily. To assemble this thing hot glue is going to be the best option. It's both really strong but also it sets up very quickly so you can put on all your pieces and move on to the next and you don't have to 
wait for the glue to dry. If you use PVA glue for this, you're gonna need to pin it and you're gonna have to wait and fight against it wanting to move around. So I think hot glue is the way to go. You can also take the hot glue to reinforce the joints and kind of squeeze it in the crevices because this will actually get covered up later. To make this guy a little bit more stable and to make him look a little bit more interesting, I actually cut a few small pieces of foam to act sort of as little rock feet. You can also see here that I glued some small chunks of foam around the seams on the legs. This both covers some of that extra hot glue in the seam, but it also starts to make this thing look like it's constructed out of boulders, multiple pieces of stone, and not just one solid chunk. I made the arms in basically the same way I made the legs, except that I was a little bit more creative with the shape. I wanted them to have some bend in them so that there was more of a pose happening here. And I wanted to imply that there was these big kind of massive fist-like boulders on the end. So you just gotta be a little bit more creative on the arms than I think you do on the legs. Now, onto the head, and this is where I had to be a little bit careful that I didn't make this thing look too goofy. I mean, giving it a head of any kind was going to make it look sort of cartoonish and silly, but I didn't want to take that too far. So essentially, my methodology here was to try to carve the most crude skull shape I could so that it had a sort of normal face-like structure with two eyes and a mouth, but I didn't want it to look too silly, even though it did end up looking kind of silly. And kids and adults alike, take that bloody band-aid as a warning to be careful when you're doing this amount of foam carving with a knife. I wanted this thing to be really bottom heavy so that it didn't easily fall over on the table. Foam is very light, and since this thing is kind of tall, basically a small breeze would knock it over. So to weight the bottom, I decided to grab some lag bolts. It's just what I had on hand. They work really well because I could screw them right into the bottoms of the legs. I cut a small little groove in the bottom so that the head of the bolt could recess, and then I used some hot glue just to kind of fill it. This gave a nice amount of weight. You could use anything though. You could put some washers or just some nuts or whatever, but these leg bolts worked great. In the process, I also completely covered the bottom of the feet and then placed that down on some baking paper to flatten it out. And much like in my how to stop foam dungeon tiles from sliding around video, this would add some traction to the bottom of this piece and also ensure that it stood on a flat surface. Using some PVA glue, some generic construction sand, as well as some decorative rocks, I covered all of these seams and gaps on the piece. This would both hide the seams, but also give some more interest to it by having some smaller aggregates so it didn't just look like it was all giant boulders. As I looked at this thing waiting for the PVA glue to dry, I realized it was still a little bit too flat for my taste. So I grabbed some more of the cutoff scrap and I started breaking up little boulders and just hot gluing them all over the place to give this thing some more dimension and make it look a little bit more chaotic and a little bit more intimidating. And I just put them on anywhere and everywhere where I felt this piece was looking too boring or wherever there was something that I thought could use covering. I of course gave this my usual coating of Mod Podge mixed with black paint. This really helped to fill in all the little gaps and hold all of those little pieces together. Did this really suck to brush on the Mod Podge? Yeah, it did. It was a bit of a pain, but hey, such is life. Sometimes you gotta get in there and brush on in all those little nooks and crannies for the sake of a cool project. The paint job I did on this was just a very basic two-tone gray paint job. I gave the whole thing a coating in a gray and I really watered this down so that it would get in all those annoying little crevices and nooks and crannies. I didn't have to get 100% coverage because the black wash later would actually hit what I missed. 
After that, a very simple and crude dry brushing of a lighter gray, hitting most of the surfaces. Following that, one more dry brushing with a vanilla or off-white on the highest surfaces. And to put it in perspective of how much paint to use when doing the white on something like this, I only loaded my brush twice to cover the entire piece. I applied my cheap homemade black terrain wash to the piece, but instead of brushing it on, I actually used a little spray bottle. This is something I like to do once in a while. It's a little bit messy, but it gets everywhere and it gives a nice coating and I just really didn't feel like brushing it on. So you can pick up these little tiny spray bottles from your local dollar store, fill it up with your black wash and it's basically a poor man's airbrush. I mean, you're, you're not gonna do any painting, any airbrushing with it, but for applying wash, it works just dandy. The longest part of this build is definitely just waiting for the wash to dry. But once that was done, I could move on to decorating this thing with a bit of greenery. Now this is totally optional. If you're doing like a stone golem, it might not make sense, but if you're doing more of an earth elemental where this thing would rise from the earth and the earth would actually form into this hulking creature, having some grass, some bushes, that sort of thing on it will make sense and it will just look cool. The green will offset the gray and look visually more stunning on the table. You could use whatever you want for this. I used a mixture of stuff that I had on hand. I used some Gale Force 9 clump foliage, but you could use the Woodland Scenic stuff. I also used some static grass tufts that I reviewed in a previous video. These are great because they're peel and stick. I also used some moss from the craft store. To apply these, I just used hot glue. It's fast and it's easy. This is also a way that you can cover up any spots where maybe your paint and your wash missed and you still have some pesky styrofoam poking through. Just cover it up with some greenery, little dabs of hot glue, put some clump foliage, put some moss, put some static grass, as much or as little as you would like. Just go nuts with it. I sealed the entire piece with Minwax Fast Drying Polyurethane in a clear satin finish. This is my go-to for sealing styrofoam. And you might be wondering, can you spray this on after you put on stuff like clump foliage and static grass? Absolutely. In fact, I think it's better that you do it this way because the polyurethane will actually stiffen up that greenery a little bit and make it more durable. As you can see, this is a project that you can do for almost no cost with very limited supplies and tools and get something that's a real showstopper on your table. I do not doubt for a second that if you were to drop this thing on your game table, your players would simultaneously be excited and terrified. Again, I want to thank my sponsors, Miniature Market, for sponsoring this build. Again, if you need any miniatures for your game, head on over to miniaturemarket.com slash blackmagiccraft to pick some up today. If you need to pick up any tools or supplies for terrain building, head on over to blackmagiccraft.ca where I have my essential equipment store where I list all of the stuff that I actually use and recommend myself. Purchasing through those links helps fund this channel. The other way you can support this channel and these videos is by pledging on Patreon. That support is why and how I continue to make these videos every single Friday. That's it. That's all, guys. I hope you found this video useful and inspiring. If you did, hit that like button and drop me a comment below. Cheers, happy crafting, and happy gaming. Kill your players with a crazy rock monster.